the Dallas Stars have had a very up and down season up to this point. But how will they fare against one of the best teams in the National Hockey League? On today's show, I'll be joined by Hernan Silas of the Locked On Oilers podcast to talk to all things Dallas versus Edmonton. You won't want to miss it. Get insight on the Edmonton Oilers as well as my thoughts on the Dallas Stars going into tonight's game. All of this coming up on a Tuesday game day edition of Locked On Stars. <laughs> Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis. It is Tuesday, November 23rd, getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving. But before we get to Thanksgiving, we have one more Dallas Stars game day, and that is today. Tonight, the Dallas Stars will match up against the Edmonton Oilers, one of the best teams in the National Hockey League right now, led by two of the best players in the league, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Going to be a very interesting matchup, and on today's episode, in just a second, I'll be joined by Hernan Salas of Locked On Oilers to break down this matchup. But before we get into that, I do want to take a moment and say thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars. Whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe and follow the podcast wherever you get your podcast. That truly means a lot to me. Be sure to leave a review if you like what you hear. Help support the show. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube as well. Subscribing and following the podcast is absolutely free, as are any follows, likes, retweets on social media. And you guys know I always appreciate when you guys interact with me on social media. But without any further hesitation, let's get into a preview for tonight's game between the Dallas Stars and the Edmonton Oilers. Hey everyone, welcome in. This is Dane Lewis with the Locked on Stars podcast. And right now I'm joined by Hernan Salas of the Locked on Edmonton Oilers podcast to talk about tonight's matchup between the Stars and the Oilers. Hernan, how are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Can't complain. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm I'm excited to, to do this crossover. Um, and as of right now, excited for this matchup. I know that Edmonton is uh, a very talented team, a very good team so far through this season in the Stars. Um, are just about anything but that at the moment. Um, but very excited to see how these teams match up. Um, but to kind of get this thing rolling, I, th I thought I'd ask uh, ask you some some questions about this Oilers team to kind of give Stars fans a little bit of insight about the team as a whole um, before tonight's matchup. And so the first of those that I kind of have for you, um, obviously, you know, anyone who watches the NHL knows the names Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. Um, mm -hmm. But besides the play of those guys, obviously, both of them playing very well so far this season, the top two guys in points in the entire league. What would you say is the reason for the Oilers success so far throughout the early stages of this season? Yeah, good question. Uh, outside of the two big guys, I I just got to it's got to be the depth that Kenny Holland brought in. Zach Hyman's been an absolute uh, great addition to this team. Scores goals in the dirty areas. He mucks it up. He's it's just his work ethic is just nonstop. So I think he's been a big part of it. The emergence of Jesse Pugliarvi as well on that first line, the big body, still only 22 years old, but he's been a nice addition since last year. Uh, guys like Warren Fogle, again, kind of like of that Zach Hyman ilk. Not as offensive, but just the, that work ethic these guys bring. I think they've been great additions uh, to this team for the Edmonton Oilers. They've they've really kind of added that depth that the Oilers have been searching for in the last couple of seasons. Defensively, it was a big question mark heading into the season, but so far, so good. Duncan Keys worked out. Cody Ceci's really, really surprising a lot of people here in Edmonton with his strong play. So those two guys have really stood out. Because we always said before the season, this team, if, if those guys struggled, the Oilers were going to struggle. And if they were good, the Oilers would be good. And so far, so good. And the goaltending's held up, <laughs> to be honest with you. Mike Smith went down early. Uh, Miko was was playing well and, and picking up wins. The Oilers power play and special teams were kind of getting him out of a few jams early on. And then now Stuart Skinner, a young guy, he's, he's played four games this season, but his last two games he's been stellar. So I think just everything's kind of been working out for the Edmonton Oilers outside of the top two guys. But the special teams is, is the main reason. Uh, number one power play, they're top two in the PK. So a lot of things going right so far for the Oilers this season. 
Yeah, absolutely. That that was something I was going to mention is, you know, Edmondson sits atop the the standings as far as power plays goes um, and Dallas doing pretty well themselves. I think that they're fifth as of the time of recording this. The penalty kill, definitely not so much. But you mentioned goal, goalie, the goalie situation a little bit um, as mm-hmm. of right now, just kind of based on the past few games, who should we expect to see in net for the Oilers uh, in tonight's game? Yeah, well, it was reported today at practice. Stuart Skinner was in the starters net, so it looks like he's going to get his third consecutive start. He played against Winnipeg. He was outstanding in that game. On Saturday's game, I mean, the two goals, one was a double deflection, the other one was a 2 on 0 so you couldn't really put it on him, but yeah, uh, he played well again. He was looking really calm in net, and he's going to get the start uh, tomorrow in Dallas, so we'll see what happens. The Oilers historically don't do well in Dallas, but, uh, and, and Koskinen has good numbers. He's three and one. His goal against is just over one. He has a high save percentage against the Dallas stars. So I was just a little surprised that they were going to go with Stuart Skinner because they have back to backs, but, uh, the, the young guy's hot right now, so why ruin it and uh, throw him in there? They want to see how he responds uh, on the road in a arena where the orders haven't had a lot of success. So looks like it's going to be Stuart Skinner tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that's such an important aspect of, of the NHL that maybe sometimes fans or even, you know, members of the media, we can scratch our heads a little bit. But, you know, you got to feed the hot hand and certainly, yeah. you know, keep the guy in that's going to give you the best chance to win, especially a team like Dallas where they, you know, they might only score two goals in a game where they could score five or six. You don't really know what you're going to get. Uh, you, you've mentioned several guys on this Oilers roster, guys that, you know, have provided a lot of depth for the team. Uh, you know, guys that you said have worked out. Who is one guy in particular that you would say is kind of an underrated player on this Oilers team that Stars fans should be aware of? Underrated player. I, well, I, I'd go to Zach Hyman, but he's not really underrated. So I'll probably go with Kerry Yamamoto. It, it's, he's been interesting this year. He signed late. He only signed the one-year deal. He's the same age as Jesse Pugliarvi. He's in the top six. And he's he's been kind of a whipping boy here in Edmonton. He He's... He didn't produce early on, uh, Dane, but as of late, he, he's he got the four goals. He scored shorthanded on Saturday, um, and he's really coming on. And, and I, a lot of people here in Edmonton wanted him, wanted him out of the top six. Some were even asking for him to be out of the lineup, but Dave Tippett stuck with him because he does two things well. He defends really well five on five, and he's a big part of the PK. And this guy just doesn't make the wrong plays. He's always in the right spots. He's still getting scoring chances. He was just uh, snake bitten. So Kyler Yamamoto is a guy that's really coming on. He's really small, but he, he's he got a lot of fight in his game. Like I said, he doesn't shy away from the rough stuff. And he's a guy as of late that's really come on. And, and it's great to see because, like I said, he was a bit of a whipping boy here early on. But once again, he's he's bringing a little bit more offense. And he's a big part of uh, of the PK, like I mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly valuable to have those guys that, you know, aren't always going to be the center of attention, but can make the right plays and be in the right position uh, in order to help the team night in and night out. I mean, no successful team in any sport is successful without without those guys that maybe don't always get their name thrown around. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to be interesting to see how he plays tonight. Uh, Kind of the last question I have for you, not necessarily um, directed towards this game, but just something that ran through my mind in preparing for today's uh, show. Um, just kind of a, I guess, more fun type question. I don't know if you've ever been asked this before or, or if I'm just uh, feeling creative, but let's say just kind of as a scenario, uh, GM of the Oilers comes to you and he says, hey, we're only able to keep either Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. We can only have one. Who would you choose to keep on the team and why? This is like for long term, for the rest of their career, or at least maybe for the rest of their primes. Who would you keep if you can only keep one on the team? It's Connor McDavid, generational talent. Like I, I, we've never seen a player like him before. We've seen greats. I mean, Wayne Gretzky here, the greatest of all. Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby. I'd even throw Ovechkin in there. But Connor McDavid does things that no other player does at his speed. And already two highlight reel goals this season. I love Leon Drysaitel. The fans love him too. He leads the league in scoring. Uh, they, they. They're set to play in different lines, but they always find uh, Tippett always finds a way to get them on the ice together at certain times in the game. So, I'd 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 go Connor McDavid. I mean, I don't think there's a wrong answer, but you have to go with Connor McDavid. I, yeah, I, I feel like that that was going to be your answer, but I, I mean, I always just I was like, I may as well ask because I'm you know you never know what kind of answer you're getting. Yeah, but, but I absolutely agree. Generational talent, probably you know the best. I, I don't think it's a question, at least as of right now, best player in the league and maybe the best player of, uh, you know, my lifetime besides, you know, the guys you mentioned, Crosby, Ovechkin, the guys like that. Uh, so certainly generational talent. Very excited to see 
uh, how he and Dreisaitl will match up against some of the defensemen mm. that the Stars have to off I have to offer. Uh, and I'll field some of your Stars questions here in a second. But before we move on uh, in today's episode, crossover between Locked On Stars and Locked On Oilers, I want to take a moment and say thank you to one of the sponsors of today's show, and that is Built Bar. It's the holiday season. American Thanksgiving is coming up very soon. And you know that that means tons of good food, time with family and friends. But maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar. Well, what if I told you you could feast on something delicious and feel good about it? You can feast on a Built Bar, the new holiday dessert. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end more often than not. Built Bars are only 130 calories with four grams of sugar and plenty of protein. So replace that coconut cream pie with the coconut built bar or go for a raspberry built bar instead of rat raspberry pie. Lots of good flavors to replace any slice of pie. Built bars are low calorie, low carb, low fat and high in protein. You'll also want to be on the lookout on Black Friday at built.com because they're going to have some incredible deals on their website. So be sure to check out built.com on Black Friday. But for the time being, you can visit built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Jumping into back into today's crossover episode between Locked On Stars and Locked On Oilers, I'm joined by Hernan Salas of Locked On Edmonton Oilers. Uh, and now it's your turn. You have the floor, sir, to ask any Stars-related <laughs> questions for me, uh, just so I can fill in your uh, Edmonton Oilers fan listeners um, of what to expect maybe from this Dallas Star squad in tonight's game. Yeah, Dane Lewis, Locked On Stars here on the Locked On Oilers podcast. Uh, Dane, just looking at Dallas, I, I'll be honest, I haven't watched many games of them. Uh, they currently sit at 500, 7-7-2 seven, seven, uh, with 16 points. They're uh, about yeah, four points away from that third spot where that St. Louis occupies currently right now. Mm. Um, just, I guess, to start off, uh, I mean, the first 16 games, still very early, but... Uh, what's kind of the identity of this team so far? Yeah, that's a great question. And I wish I had a very easy answer. And I, and I feel like, you know, with how early in the season uh, that it is that I should have, you know, one set thing. But I feel like the identity of this team has changed throughout the course of the season. I think early on, the defense was definitely the shining factor of this team. Uh, a lot of low scoring games, even the games Dallas was losing, the games tended to be pretty low scoring. Uh, you know, just lack of offense prevented Dallas from getting into the win column. Or if they were in the win column, it was an overtime. But I think as of right now, uh, it's certainly the special teams for Dallas, especially in their most recent game on Saturday night against St. Louis. The Stars pretty much only scored on special teams outside of an empty netter at the end of the game from the captain, Jamie Benn. But that, you know, that game saw Dallas score two shorthanded goals, both from Rupe Hintz, as well as a power play goal from Ryan Suter. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, in the last segment, Dallas uh, top five in power play percentage, you know, hanging up there with Edmonton at number one. Uh, Dallas seems to be playing their best hockey whenever they're on special teams, especially on the power play side of things. I feel like the penalty kill has been very up and down so far this season. Um, but but this team has yet to really put together a full game where they're playing five on five hockey effectively. So I say as of right now that the identity of this Stars team kind of relies on special teams. But that's probably something that's subject to change as the season goes on. Yeah, no, definitely. And I'm, I'm looking at the lineup on daily faceoff. Uh, it's probably from their last game, but I'm seeing Rupe Hintz, Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Uh, all on separate lines. Is is that the best way to go for the Dallas Stars? I know Sagan and Ben play a ton. Uh, Rupe Hintz is just a guy that's that's since last year, a couple of years ago, really came on strong, and he's a hell of a player. But um, is this what we might see uh, tonight versus the Edmonton Oilers, where they have uh, you know three very talented centers all on different lines? Yeah, I think so. I think that's kind of how Coach Rick Bonus wants the team structured right now, especially with a guy like Rupe. I think Rupe has recently found the most success uh, on his line with Joe Pavelski and J Jason Robertson. Uh, and then Tyler Sagan, um, you know, still kind of recovering, not necessarily recovering from injury last season, but I think, you know, the coaching staff isn't wanting to make him play too many minutes just because he is starting to grow a little bit older in age um, and obviously missed most of last season. I think mm -hmm. he got to play three games. Uh, with an injury that he suffered, you know, back in the 2020 playoffs in the bubble, uh, you know, which was the case for several players in the league. But I, I you know, and even Jamie Ben, Jamie Ben has found a lot of success playing center, even though that hasn't necessarily always been his position in the NHL. He's played a lot on the wing, um, but he's played alongside Dennis Garyanov and Michael Roffel quite a bit this season. And I just think that's where most of his success has come. Um, and he's done really well in the faceoff circle, which has been another strength for this Stars yeah. team. 
So kind of weird to, you know, to see the lineup shaken up a little bit, but I think that coach bonus is doing what he sees best fit, uh, you know, whether that's popular among the fan base or not um, to put this team in the best position to win. And, you know, there's some games that Dallas falls short in overtime or regulation and close losses, uh, but it's not due to lack of opportunity on scoring from the offense, just maybe a lack of execution or, you know, missing some shots that on any other night they probably would hit. Who would match up against the, let's say, dry side old McDavid or split? Uh, who would line up against the McDavid line? Would it be Rupe Hintz? Probably so. I, I imagine, okay. yeah, that you'd see Rupe Hintz out there, I would think. Okay. And uh, defensively, I mean, a talented group. Like, I absolutely love Miro Heiskin, and I think this guy's an absolute stud. Uh, John Klimberg, uh, S. Lendell, you brought in Ryan Suter, uh, the veteran presence there at, at a good number as well. Uh, Miro Heiskin and leads the Dallas Stars in scoring. I think he leads them also in in assist. Uh, how's the back end look? And and specifically Miro Heiskin, who's, I mean, he's on everyone's radar right now because he's just such a talented defenseman. Yeah, absolutely. Miro, you know, like you said, on everyone's radar, and especially you know being watched very closely by everyone, you know, in the Stars organization as well mm-hmm. as the fan base because he got signed to an eight year deal this past off season. Yeah. Uh, and he's lived up to the hype so far. And I, and I think, you know, Stars fans aren't necessarily surprised because of the way he's played, you know, as of the past few seasons. Uh, a guy that, you know, everyone really likes to watch play. Easily the best skater on the team. Very fast. There's been several instances this season, you know, where guys have maybe had some breakaway opportunities on offense. But then Miro just comes flying down the ice uh, and shuts it down. And, and, you know, there's not a whole lot of guys, uh, you know, that can make those kind of plays. But Miro, as at this point in his career, is a guy that, you know, has to make those kind of plays because yeah. Dallas has a tendency to turn the puck over quite a bit. Uh, and so thankfully, you know, we have a guy like Miro that can uh, shut down some of those breakaway opportunities. But yeah, he's played really well. He's typically, you know, he, the defensemen have been shuffled around a lot this season. I think that the coaching staff is still just trying to figure out who's best with who. He's seen a lot of time with Essa Lindell. Uh, and where whereas on the other end, you've seen Ryan Suter and John Klingberg together. Uh, Yanni Hockenpah is a guy that got signed this offseason. Uh, and he's played okay so far. I think he's still kind of getting his footing here in the NHL. A little bit of a younger guy. He leads the team in penalty minutes as of right now. Uh, so definitely, you know, a little bit more needs to be worked on as far as discipline goes. Um, but Miro Haskin and definitely a guy to be on the lookout for in tonight's matchup. I don't think he scored a goal in, in quite a few games. But like, like you said, he does lead the team in points mm-hmm. and assists. So whether he's scoring goals or not, I'm sure that he'll find a way to, you know, be a part of the game plan and, you know, maybe get his name on, on a few scorecards as far as assists goes tonight. Yeah, one last one for you, uh, Braden Holpe, day to day with an injury. Uh, who are we going to see between the pipes? Yeah, that, that's another really good question, and something you know, go, the goalie situation has been quite the predicament for the Stars pretty much ever since I've, I've started hosting the Locked On Stars podcast back in <laughs> uh, September. Um, but yeah, like you said, Braden Holtby still injured. Last I've seen and heard and read, um, Holtby still day to day. We probably won't see him. We saw Jake Ottinger uh, play on Saturday against St. Louis. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw Jake Ottinger again just because he's played very well in his two starts this season. He spent most of this season at the AHL level with the Texas Stars. Um, Anton Hudobin hasn't been awful this season. There's been times where he's looked awful, but as a whole, he's been pretty so-so. Um, but I imagine, you know, similar to the Oilers goalie situation, um, you know, starting a younger guy with maybe a little less experience, but a guy that has played well in his two starts. So I would expect to see Jake Ottinger. Um, but of course, you know, I, I've been wrong before, and so I could be yeah. wrong again. <laughs> Uh, by in my guessing of the night before the game, who we're going to see, but I would imagine we would see Jake Ottinger in the net. Good stuff. Uh, that's a good breakdown of the Dallas Stars. It's the first matchup between these two teams. Excited to see the Oilers once again playing uh, American teams. We were so pumped to see them back here at Rogers Place. So uh, always fun when the Oilers are on the road and visiting arenas that we haven't seen in uh, in quite a while due to the uh, pandemic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm. I'm Also very glad that, you know, the schedule is open back up and everyone, you know, on the teams is able to travel everywhere. And I know some, especially the younger guys are, you know, playing in arenas that they didn't get to play in at all last season. So uh, good for the league and good for the world of sports in general to have the NHL back open. Uh, Coming up next on today's episode to close things out with Hernan Salas of Locked On Oilers and myself, Dane Lewis of Locked On Stars. We'll take a moment and kind of give some of our predictions and overall thoughts for tonight's matchup. But before we do that, I do want to take a moment and say thank you to another sponsor of today's episode, and that is Bet Online. It's Thanksgiving, and we all know what that means, football. And nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has you covered all holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. 
Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code locked on to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. And to close out today's crossover episode between Locked On Stars and Locked On Oilers, myself and Hernan Salas of Locked On Oilers are going to take a moment and just kind of give some predictions for tonight's big game at the American Airlines Center in Dallas. So, Hernan, I'll kind of let you go first. What is your overall predictions and thoughts of how this game is going to unfold? <laughs> Yeah, this one's interesting. I'm just looking at like, their last regular season games. Oilers took two in Dallas, which kind of surprises me, both by a score of 2-1, to one, one in overtime. But that was a long, long time ago. Their last game was March 3rd, 2020. Um, yeah, I just find the Oilers always have a tough time in Dallas. I mean, they're coming off a good win. So is Dallas. I'm going to – how about this? I'm going to take the Dallas Stars in overtime. By a score of three to two. Wow, that's a uh, that's interesting. The stars historically not always the best in overtime, uh, <laughs> but somehow to start this season, I think their first three or four wins of the season all came in overtime. So we we've done okay in overtime so far this season. Obviously, have dropped a few, um, you know. And honestly, I'll, I'll probably you know kind of lean the other way. I think the stars, you know, did come off a really nice win, um, you know, against the St. Louis Blues. But it wouldn't surprise me. If they kind of came out flat, you know, that's kind of how been the theme of the star season. You know, they won two straight at home against Philadelphia and Detroit and then went on the road to Minnesota and got embarrassed seven to two by the Minnesota Wild. And obviously this game is at home. But, you know, I'm just curious to see how Dallas is going to play against some of the best competition that they'll see all season on a team like Edmonton. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me to see them lose this game at home and maybe even lose by you know, two goals or maybe a little bit more. And I, I think if they win, I will agree with you there that if the Dallas Stars win, it probably will be an overtime. Uh, and if they win, it could be pretty low scoring and be kind of a grinded out game. Uh, but do you have any predictions on maybe who's going to get the first goal for Edmonton or maybe a guy that needs to get going or have a big night in order to set Edmonton up for success? Yeah, I, I always do this on my podcast to someone who's going to score. And, and and just on your point, uh, uh, the Oilers have had slow starts outside of that Saturday game. They've been they they didn't score the first goal, I think, for seven straight games up until Saturday. Oh, wow. So they're they're not a, a fast starting team. <laughs> so that might bode well for the Dallas Stars. Hopefully. Hopefully they can start like they did on Saturday, but uh, we'll wait and see on that. Uh, you know what? A guy that he hasn't scored in a bit here. It hasn't been a long stretch, but I think Jesse Pugliarvi gets off the schneid uh, tonight. I think he's 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 getting the opportunities. That in that Winnipeg game, Dane, I think he could have had a hat trick, but Connor Hellebuck robbed him three times in, in that game. So I think he's due for a goal. He does play with Connor McDavid. He's his regular right wing. And he does get time on the power play. So I'm going to go with Jesse Pugliari. What about you? Yeah, I, I think for the Dallas Stars, also a team that can start pretty slow. Uh, I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I think they've only won one game so far this season where they haven't scored first. And so really important if Dallas is going to win this game that they need to get the offense going quick um, and, and get it going pretty early in the game and be strong. But I think as far as first goal predictions, uh, similar to you, a guy that hasn't really scored in a while, has been playing. Um, and, you know, has been, you know, I think doing a lot of things right, but just hasn't necessarily found the back of the net is Alexander Radulov, uh, a veteran in this league, a guy that, you know, is getting a little bit up there in age, but still can produce for this Stars team. I think he'll probably be playing a good amount with Tyler Sagan. Um, and so, you know, with a guy like Sagan on the ice, there's always good offensive opportunities for, for anyone that's going to play with number 91. Um, and so I'll go ahead and predict that Alexander Radulov gets the stor scoring started for Dallas, but wouldn't be surprised to see someone from the Jason Robertson, Rupe Hintz, or Joe Pavelski line as well. But I, I, yeah, two teams that uh, it sounds like, you know, can struggle to score offensively. So maybe we'll get a, a low scoring affair with not a whole lot of scoring, especially in the <laughs> yeah. first period. Uh, and, and Dallas historically this season has been, pretty bad in the second so that could be you know a huge opportunity oh, okay. for this Edmonton yeah. team 
<laughs> I don't know how y'all. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we'll see. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, like you said, it, and Dallas is is. I mean, I look at their lineup, and it's just a, a ton of of like. I mean, Sagan and and Ben stand out. Hints, Robertson, Gurianov. Like when those guys are on, they're really good players. So this one's going to be good. And keep in mind, Darnell Nurse is out. Uh, the Oilers played well in that first game without him, but uh, they're not as strong on the back end without Darnell Nurse. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely something to be, you know, mindful of uh, injuries, you know, of course, always play a big role in this league and, you know, can throw off the chemistry of, of lines and just guys on the roster yeah. in general. Uh, so a pretty, pretty pivotal game, I would say for both teams, because you guys are, uh, are, are Edmonton and Calgary still pretty close in the, the standings in the Pacific. Yeah, Calgary's uh, one point up, but the Oilers have two games in hand, so it's it's a good. Okay. We're loving it down here. We hope this is the way it goes all season long because it's only going to make the Battle of Alberta that much better. Yeah, yeah, as if those games needed more drama added. To yeah, no doubt that, that, that those two teams <laughs> match up. Uh, you know, it makes it ex exciting for anyone who's just a fan of good hockey. Uh, you know, but big for that reason for you guys, and I know big for the Stars, as you said at the the start of the show. Dallas kind of looking to get back into relevancy within this Central Division, and you know, even though this isn't a divisional game, a huge game nonetheless to to maybe prove yeah. to some of the the hockey world that Dallas is still a competitive team, because uh, I think a lot of people have kind of moved on from the Dallas Stars in the early stages of this season just because they haven't they haven't done a lot of noteworthy things so far this season outside of two shorthanded goals um from the same guy in their last game that's that's probably about it no it sounds good it should be a fun one I, I can't wait it's always uh always a good time when they play in the good old Dallas Stars we always take it back to the mid 90s late 90s like that rivalry the Oilers and Stars had and um we still live it and we still dislike the stars quite a bit down here. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that, uh, that you know, makes any fan excited to see. Cause I know Dallas stars fans love to see the, the intensity and the shoving and maybe the occasional glove drop. I don't, I don't anticipate we'll see that in Tuesday's matchup, but you never know, you know, it always spices things up to yeah. see teams that, that hold those old rivalries near and dear to their heart, but always exciting to have crossover episodes here at locked on stars today. I was joined by Hernan Salas of locked on Edmonton Oilers. Hernan, thank you so much for hopping on the show and uh, hope you enjoy the game and we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, thank you. Great chatting with you and uh, we'll, we'll do this again when Dallas visits Edmonton. Oh yeah, I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Stars fans, just staying back here. I hope you enjoyed that conversation that I got to have with Hernan Salas of Locked On Edmonton Oilers. Be sure to go check him out uh, on Twitter, on social media. Um, if you want to learn more, about the Edmonton Oilers going into tonight's game. You can also find the Locked On Oilers podcast on Twitter as well. Uh, really enjoyed my conversation with him to get some insight about this team um, because the Edmonton Oilers are more than just Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, even though those are two of the best players in the National Hockey League. Uh, and, you know, as Hernan brought up, really excited for this matchup just because of, you know, some of the historic rivalry that this team, ha that these both of these teams have built up with one another kind of back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, a little bit before my time. That was around the time I was born. So I didn't get, you know, I didn't really watch that kind of uh, action growing up just because, you know, I was a, a little baby and couldn't remember that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, any of you that, you know, are, are were, you know, watching hockey back in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, that the Stars and Oilers met up a lot, especially in the postseason. Um, that, you know, from what I've seen and heard on those games, it was really exciting, really intense. So maybe one of the more underappreciated rivalries, air quotes, you know, if you can call it that in the National Hockey League. But this is going to be a huge game tonight. Like I said just a bit ago, huge game for the Stars in terms of trying to, you know, to continue to climb the ranks in the Central Division to get back to relevancy in the division and ultimately in the National Hockey League to get, you know, get things going before too long. We're going to be at the Olympic break. And then before you know it, the spring's going to be here and it's going to be time for the playoffs. And so tonight, a huge chance for the Stars to gain some momentum against one of the best teams in the league. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day. Thank you for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day at the Locked on Bets podcast, your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Be sure to go check those guys out, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of betting here with Thanksgiving. I know we have three football games as well as some hockey happening around Thanksgiving time. So be sure to go check those guys out if you plan on doing any sort of gambling or betting around sports here with Thanksgiving. Be sure to tune into tomorrow's show to get a full breakdown of tonight's matchup. We'll do some post-game reactions, breakdowns, 
uh, things like that. You know, talk about whatever transpires in tonight's matchup against the Oilers. But be sure to subscribe and follow the podcast Locked on Stars if you do not do so already. Be sure to tell a friend or family member about the show if they're looking to get their daily stars need for news, analytics, stats, insight, met. Uh, you, you can find all of that here at the Locked on Stars podcast. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. That's D-A-N-E two underscores L-E-W-I-S. You can also find the show on Twitter at Locked on Stars. But thank you guys again so much for listening. We will see you back here tomorrow for a Wednesday edition of Locked on Stars.